Tech Tales 5, May 3rd, about 11 a.m. on a Friday. Uh, today I'm going to go over my time slips for the week, although today being Friday it's not finished yet. One of my ideas behind doing Tech Tales is to relay to uh, people who maybe are interested in becoming self-employed technicians for small businesses uh, what it's like and, and what I do during a day or a week. So I'm going to go over these time slips and I'm going to try not to get too deeply involved in any of them so I can get through them in a reasonable amount of time. So uh, here Friday morning I'm showing 17 hours and 2 minutes for the week. Coincidentally it's uh, 17 time slips. And we'll start with Monday um, April 29th, 9.40 a.m. to 9.56 a.m. at 16 minutes. Jackie from a law office. I connected remotely to her computer to configure a user account on a computer that she usually doesn't use uh, so that she could log in as herself. Uh, Monday, April 29th, 11.49 to 12.24 p.m. That's 35 minutes. At a chiropractor's office, uh, Linda, I fixed the white balance. She got a new card scanner for scanning insurance cards, and it was come out, coming out too light. So the solution was to download the manufacturer's software, most current from their website, and use the um, calibration card that came with the device to calibrate what white is supposed to look like, and that fixed it. A pest control company from 12.41 p.m. to 12.50 p.m., nine minutes at their office for Franny. I picked up an HP all-in-one computer for lab work. They weren't able to turn the computer on. They had already tried a number of things, so I just I knew I was just going to pick it up and bring it back to the lab. That became a pretty involved project, and I did some uh, videos and pictures of that work and intending to put that together to uh, make another Tech Tales video out of it. The next entry in my time slips here is 1.30 p.m. to 12.50 for that same uh, pest control company, but this was for lab work. Now, I started the lab work on that day, and so I started the time slip, but this time slip actually is recording the time over multiple days and so I'm going to move this time slip to Thursday uh, Wednesday because I returned the computer to him on Thursday. The time slip reads Franny lab work over multiple days troubleshoot computer failure to boot use multiple methods to run repair utilities determined hard drive to be defective attached hard drive to a lab computer and now the lab computer won't start. It actually damaged the lab computer, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Actually, it wasn't a lab computer. It was a computer for another client. I'm going to have to buy them another computer. So that was a sad thing. Uh, continuing on, um, now lab computer fails to boot. Sub suspects short to ground in the hard drive, making data recovery not possible. Installed replacement hard drive, installed Windows 10, and performed routine configuration steps. Now, this computer wasn't being backed up, but this user does not store any data that they care about on the computer. And we've known that all along. We knew we weren't backing up this computer, so that's that's not a big problem. Then, oh, that was uh, that's recorded as 3 hours 20 minutes. Now, that's over the course of multiple days. Now, actually, I spent substantially more time than that, but I capped it at that because I thought that was reasonable for what I should have done on that computer. I did more time than that because I have kind of a stubborn technical curiosity to try to figure out things that are going on beyond what is uh, reasonably justifiable on the client's behalf. So I spent more time on it that I won't bill for, and I consider that to be continuing education. Then we skip, no, I got another one for Monday, April 29th, 1.52 p.m. to 2.22 p.m. 
And now that actually overlaps with the time that I recorded for that lab work, but that time that I recorded for the lab work, I didn't actually do those hours. And though the time, that time range won't actually display on the invoice. But anyway, this 152 to 222 is for that same pest control company. That's 30 minutes. Brett, phone and remote connection due to Jason unable to browse internet due to router failing to assign IP address, restarted router to solve. When we started troubleshooting this over the phone, we found that the IP address was an auto-generated IP address, not one that was dis uh, assigned by the DHCP server, which is on the Comcast router. The Comcast router hands out addresses. So what we did was uh, I, I connected remotely to one of their other computers and through that connected to the router and then issued a restart command from there. And then Jason was able to connect to the internet. <clears throat> a curious thing there is that Jason was able to browse to Google sites even with an auto-generated IP address. And that's still a mystery to me. I don't know how that happens. It seems like it shouldn't be able to happen because it doesn't even have a gateway address uh, under those circumstances. Then next we skip to Wednesday. Now the reason we skip to Wednesday is because Tuesday I pretty much was all lab work that day and the only lab work that I have recorded at the moment is the Brett's HP computer and again, I, like I said, I spent more time than what I'm actually billing for. I also spent that time on that day working on another client's computer in the lab that hasn't been recorded on my time slips yet. I'll be recording that when it comes time to deliver that computer. So anyway, this one, May 1st, which would have been Wednesday, a construction company, Rose, phone and remote, phone and remote connection, to attempt to fix failure of scanning from copier to Rose computer. The usual remote fix methods failed to solve the problem. Determined on-site service will be more cost effective in this instance. Now we spent 46 minutes over the phone uh, trying to resolve this and this was with her taking cell phone pictures and sending them to me by text. Uh, I did not remote uh, connect remote to her computer. Well, wait a minute. Yeah, I did connect remote too. Oh, I needed her to do cell phone pictures of what was on the screen of the copy machine. Anyway, we failed to get it uh, resolved and I probably went too far in that phone work, but usually I can fix a, uh, that type of a problem with remote or phone support and that didn't work out this time so we've got another time slip later on where I went on site to fix that but this one the phone was for 46 minutes then the next one is also Wednesday 11:33 a.m. to 11:59 a.m. that's 26 minutes that's at a chiropractor office their x-ray well what I call their x-ray computer is just outside the x-ray room Fixed Ethernet connection on laptop near X-ray room. Determine broken Ethernet socket in the laptop. Um, not repairable. I provided advice to uh, Tracy for how to uh, fix that, which is basically just pull the Ethernet cable out and push it back in. Um, I had tried to, I had just replaced the Ethernet cable, and when that didn't plug in, I scratched my head and what's going on here? So I looked closer at it and found the little tab on the Ethernet socket was broken out. And um, then I recollected, I think that was done some time ago. So as long as they know about it, that's an easy thing. It's an easy laptop to get to, it's easy to get to that Ethernet cable. So we're not going to do anything more with that. Then on, well, let's see, next one, Wednesday, 12.19 to 12.42 p.m. at the construction office now. 
uh, for rows, fix scanning problem by changing settings on copier that don't work reliably with Windows 10. Restarted Wi-Fi router to fix the Wi-Fi failure. And then for Don in the same office, advised him to clear any update messages related to the backup software and messages that were showing up in the Windows 10 notification area because he was new to, not to Windows 10. Uh, I'm going to pause for that garbage truck to go by. All right, he's gone. So the thing about Rose's computer and the scanning is that I recently upgraded her computer to Windows 10. Delivered the computer back to her office and we tested scanning. It was working fine. It worked fine for a few days after that and then stopped working. Well, what turned out to be the issue is that the way that the copier company had set up the configuration, they had put in a uh, the computer name and a uh, share name on the same field and that wasn't working out in Windows 10. We need the computer name on one line, the share name on another line. And so I made that change and then it, it worked. May 1st also, nope, let's get down here. Uh, May 1st, 6.57 p.m. to 9.29 p.m., 2 hours, 32 minutes, uh, for a CPA's office uh, listed as QuickBooks. I connected remote to Heidi's computer, purchased the upgrade to the new version 2019 of QuickBooks, downloaded installed on the server Heidi Roland and reception computers performed reset of Intuit account password created new complex QuickBooks password for Heidi Roland installed upgrade to Internet Explorer version 11 as required by QuickBooks 2019 Roland was still on Windows 7 which all but one of their com two of their computers are still on Windows 7 and uh, Roland even had Internet Explorer version 10 and QuickBooks 2019 required version 11. So I did that upgrade. So that's uh, two hours, 32 minutes remote connections to upgrade all of their computers uh, to the new version of QuickBooks. Then we're on May 2nd. That would have been Thursday, 9, 12 a.m. to 11.50 a.m., for the pest control company. And this is for Fran returning his HP all-in-one computer. Installed repaired computer, configured local printer, downloaded and installed Brother Control Center and related drivers. Installed Adobe Acrobat Reader, DC, installed two Kyocera printers. Those are the copy machines. Configured log me in one, two, three, so that I can do remote connections discussed use of surge protector with Brett and Fran. I mentioned earlier about the need to plug into surge protector. There was a surge protector there. <laughs> we connected the computer now to a surge protector instead of to that extension cord that was connected directly to the wall. J and then for Jason in the same office, um, configured network printers, changed computer name and work group, Assigned static IP address, configured scanning, installed Adobe Acrobat Reader DC. Now, Jason is the one that uh, a couple days before I had to restart the router for him to be able to pick up an IP address. So now I just configured a static IP address because I'm sure that Comcast router is going to have trouble again. In fact, it already did have trouble that day installing Fran's computer. When I brought Fran's computer in, it was unable to get a, a IP address from the Comcast router. So I went ahead and configured his static IP address to the same address his computer used to have. We've already done all the other computers in that office for static IP addresses. Well, so Fran's computer being just repaired didn't have that yet, I had to put that in. Jason's computer he had just recently purchased. So that's why he didn't already have a static IP address. Next is uh, Thursday, 2.11 p.m. to 2.52 p.m., 41 minutes. Oh, I don't think I said back on the pest control company. That was two hours and 38 minutes total. 
So this one, 41 minutes in a law office, uh, Leslie, reconfigured phone extension. Now, so this is work that I do with their phone system. They have about 50 phones on an IP phone system. So they, they have the IP phone service through one company. Another company is their phone vendor. And anytime they want to move phones around, they were having to call the phone vendor and schedule them to come out. It might take a couple days for that to happen. Somewhere along the line, uh, I, I could tell the phone vendor was getting kind of exasperated with how often they were doing this because I don't think they, well, I don't know if they were charging for the trip. But I volunteered to take on that task. So we installed the Avaya IP phone management software, well, Office IP, I think it's called on my laptop so that I could go in and make those changes. Now it's a little difficult to do. I'm kind of doing a hacking job when I, when I do that because it's not very straightforward. It's not very intuitive the way that it works. And this one was a good example of that. So the time slip reads, reconfigure phone extension, backups, I swap their hard drives. Currently I'm doing the hard drive swaps because we have a couple complications in their office. I'm not gonna go into that now. And then Jeanette, uh, fix access to scanned images from copier. Yeah, she reported that she wasn't able to get to the scanned images on the Toshiba copier. In this office, we have a shortcut on their desktop which accesses the stored scanned images actually on a hard drive that's on the copy machine. She wasn't able to access that anymore. She used to access it fine. Stalling for that garbage truck. She used to access it fine. And turns out what happened is a Windows 10 update took away the SMB client protocol on her computer. These copier machines use a obsolete SMB protocol for communicating to the network. Apparently this is a security uh, risk in Microsoft's uh, view. And so I've had this happen before where I need to activate the SMB client module. Now back at that pest control company, for them we were having the copy machine send the scanned images to their computers into a scans folder. On those computers, I had to activate the SMB server module. Now, the way you do that is go into Add and Remove Programs, or, or the place we're going to do programs. On the left-hand side, there's a link for Windows Features. And then scroll down to the list to find the SMB section, expand it, and put a check mark for the SMB server and or SMB client depending upon your circumstances. So that fixed her scanning issue. Next is also Thursday, May 2nd. Have I been saying the May 2nd as, well, the May 2nd were Thursdays. I might have been saying them as Wednesday. May 2nd, Thursday, 2.52 p.m. to 3.31 p.m. If I was making those mistakes, you'd just figure it out. And this is 39 minutes. Um, Raymond in a CPA's office. Uh, previously, I had a time slip for them for upgrading their QuickBooks. This was phone and remote connection support. Attempting to fix QuickBooks company file close error. He was having a problem. Now, he, I didn't do an upgrade on QuickBooks for him because he was using the accountant's edition of QuickBooks and he already had the new version. But he was having a symptom here that I didn't know about until he reported it um, yesterday where in the accountant's edition, every time he went to close a company file, he would get an error message and he winded up having to do end task. And this has been going on for months. So we tried some things over the phone to resolve that and failed to resolve it. 
And I said, leave your computer on tonight and I'll connect remotely and check it out. And so, yeah, there's going to be a time slip in a little bit for that. So now that was while I was in the attorney's office. I actually worked with, with Raymond by phone and remote connection. So I wound up stopping my time for the attorney's office for the time that I was spending with Raymond. So then here I returned my attention back to Leslie's computer and I show that as 3.32 p.m. to 3.50 p.m., 18 minutes. And I just said, Leslie continued. And then I got interrupted again by somebody else in that law office. And this was a situation where one of the senior attorneys, I'm probably going to wind up billing this directly to his account. So I can't put it on the same account as Leslie. So I started a new time slip while I was still in the same office. 3.51 p.m. to 4.37 p.m. 46 minutes. Uh, Perez, discuss configuration and plans for new Lenovo laptop computers for home office and took both Lenovo laptop computers for lab work. So I'm going to be setting up these new computers uh, for him. And we had a rather lengthy conversation about his plans for them. Next, um, in the same law office, I finished the time slip for him. So then went back on my time slip for the law office. 4.38 p.m. to 5.23 p.m., 45 minutes. Leslie, continued phone configuration, completed change of extension assignment to phones, change of name display and change of ring in status via hunt group, documented procedure and night service for future reference. So this is a situation where in the Savaya office IP phone software, it's not very intuitive. And what happened is she was going to move from one desk to another so i'm and she wants to take her phone extension number to the new desk as her but on the phone that's already there we have to use the phone that's already there i'm going to pause for a minute i'm going to pause for a minute so you just notice a change in the background noise with that garbage truck going by I edited that out so anyway, yeah, this uh, change of phone extension, it, it was a weird thing. Um, I, I went to some tabs and fields that looked like they'd be the obvious way to uh, change a, the phone extension. That didn't work out. So I went to another place where I didn't think it would be the solution. And that turned out to be the solution. But then the next problem was that the phone that she was going to was the what I've referred to in the past as the second reception desk. First reception desk and second reception desk. Both of these phones have that extra module on the side that have all the extra buttons that the rest of the office don't have. Well, Leslie at this reception two desk was not really going to be functioning as a reception to answer the phones. She didn't want that phone to ring. So she asked me to dis disable the, the ringer there. And the obvious ways to do that wasn't working. So I wound up going to, a, when, when I compared the settings of other phones in the office to this phone, the, the thing that was different was a thing called Hunt Group. The, the phones that were not ringing had a Hunt Group called Default. And the reception phones had nothing listed in that field. I, I thought that's a weird way to control the ringing. And when I changed the hunt group to default, that turned on another field where I could select user for a, a piece of information. And so I made those changes and that did it. That stopped the second reception phone from ringing without anything in the wording of that 
whole tab or that field or the content of that field, nothing there uh, implied uh, ringing. A hunt group, as I understand it, is when you pick up a phone, you're going to place a call. How does it choose which line you're going to call out on? That's my understanding of a hunt group. So I don't know. Maybe maybe the hunt group has a configuration that if you're a member of that hunt group, then your phone doesn't ring for incoming calls. But anyway, so I got that figured out. So I documented it in my notes in OneNote and also <laughs> documented how to turn night service and backline on and off because at five o'clock they all left the office. So I'm here after five o'clock to figure this out, which was perfect because then I could turn it on and off of night service and I was more free to experiment. So I had to turn it off of night service and then call the number to see if the reception to phone would ring or not. So here's some things where you've seen with, with the, the card scanner and the copy machines and the phone systems. Those are all, all areas a little bit outside of the realm of what some computer consultants might consider to be their area of working. Now, when I work in these areas for my clients, I tell them right up front, I'm not an expert in this area, but if you want me to deal with this, I'm, I'm happy to. And uh, they know they get charged for whatever time I spend, and I learn something new. I get to play with something new and different, and I like that just fine. So from my client's point of view, sometimes they're choosing to let me do that even when the other vendor does not charge them for that service. And the reasons for that is because that other vendor might take a number of days before they get out, when they get out, their technician does not understand the workings of that office very well, and they don't communicate quite so well. Oftentimes, that technician is pressed for time. They want to do this in the shortest amount of time they can. So they're not going to ask questions like, do you want this? Do you want that? Do you want me to do that this way or that way? They don't get all of that. When they have me do it, I have very quick response time. I, when they call me, I can generally be in the same day or the next day if it's a issue of somebody not being able to perform their work in a reasonable method. Um, and then they just they have a relationship with me. They 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 know me so. Um, they find they prefer to do that. So, hey, that works fine for me, works fine for them, great. Um, well, another thing is the phones and copy machines are in, interconnected with each other so much in these offices that it makes sense to have one person that understands it all. All right, so then next so we get to... May 2nd, Thursday, 7.38 p.m. to 9.46 p.m., the CPA's office, Raymond, remote connection, attempt repair and reinstall QuickBooks 2018 Accountants Edition, failed with specific error message, search for text documents on the error, finding marginally relevant information, performed additional troubleshooting, Eventually accomplished, uninstall and reinstall, unable to test without password. I need to call Raymond today and find out if the problem is resolved. Now, one of the things I was trying to do is a repair installation of QuickBooks, and this was failing with an error message about a temporary file. And I was going to the folder where that temporary file was, and I could see the files there, but I couldn't manipulate them. I even tried restarting in safe mode with networking support so I could have my remote connection and I tried manipulating those files but when I did that there were no files in that folder so it was an odd thing and every time I go to that folder I had to grant access to it um, as an administrator so that was kind of a strange head scratcher but uninstalling it and reinstalling it seemed to go smoothly and I'm suspecting the problem that he was having is he has a lot of different versions of QuickBooks installed. 
the straight user versions, the accountants editions, the enterprise editions for all the different years. I didn't count them up, but he might have 30 or more editions of QuickBooks installed and operational on that computer. And my suspicion is that this accountants edition 2018 uh, some other edition got installed after that. And I noticed he actually does have the Accountants Edition 2019 already on his computer. And I'm suspecting that the installation of some other version, which could be the 2019 version, actually triggered this problem somehow. All right, so the last time slip was this morning. Um, a relative to the, uh, the chiropractic office, the chiropractor's father, his home computer. I, I don't generally work for home computers except for my clients or in some cases the relatives of the clients. Don't like working in, with home environment because with office environments, I can have tasks on my list of things to do and I can show up when it fits into my day. I don't have to coordinate the time that I'm gonna arrive the way that I would with residential. Um, and also residential um, home users have a little harder time handling charging the rates that I charge. They're not accustomed to paying a professional level rate. Even though my professional level rate is lower than than I think most of my competition. Um, lower by choice. I don't have any intention to bring my rates up to the level that I know my competitors are at. I'm making enough money at this level. So this one this morning, 5.55 a.m. to 6.05 a.m. Oh, uh, John had replied to email message and explain methods to identify an email as legit or scam and provided guidance for best practices. So he had sent me an email asking, Doug, is this legit? And it was a message from uh, Social Security Administration telling, inviting him to check up on his account. Well, the, re, the email address that it came from, when I float my mouse over it, I actually see an ssa.gov address then there was a link in the body of the email for him to click on to go look at his account. Float your mouse over that and look down on the bottom left-hand corner of your browser to see that it is a uh, Social Security, I, I think it was Social Security Administration, it was a longer name, .gov. So I was explaining him to the email about how to look at these addresses that's on the, the from email address and any link in there. And I said, it's, it looks legit. And there's no spelling errors or grammatical errors as there usually are in a scam email. But I said, best practices, I recommend you use the shortcut that you have on your browser or type in the web address to go to and just be in the habit of not clicking on any links inside the body of an email. Now I do, I will click on the, a link inside the body of the email, but I'll check it first to see what the address is. I don't really want a end user to adopt that approach because I'm concerned about will they do that every time? I trust myself to do that every time. Now if an end user does trust themselves to do it every time, that's fine. But you need to know how to go to your account website for whatever account uh, without having to rely upon a link in an email. All right, so that's the week's worth uh, so far. We've got 17 hours and two minutes. And Friday is not over with yet. So I hope that was uh, useful or informative or whatever. Make use of it at what you will. And I'll, or you'll see me next time.